Don Da Don is a manga currently running under Shonen Jump Plus. These guys. But at the same time, so is World End Harem, and that show is slightly more retarded than the title. So what makes Don Da Don special? We could start with the author of One Punch Man giving Don Da Don an official G pass. Oh, that wasn't enough for you? The author of Maiden Abyss, Hell's Paradise, or Chainsaw Man ring a bell? And if you have any faith in me at all, trust me when I say Don Da Don was one of the most exhilarating experiences I've had with manga in a long, long time. There's panels that come to life, fight sequences that chew your nails to the bone, and characters that you want to squeeze. That's why Don Da Don is the top recommendation in Japanese bookstores. That's why your favorite author likes it. And the crazy part is, this all started Sometimes you gotta on a whim. close the door to open a window. What? Don't look at me. Ken doesn't fit in. The dude's hair sticks up funny, and he would rather keep his head down than stand up to the class bullies. Momo, on the other hand, does not play with that shit. She's bold and knows exactly what she wants. And on one random day, Momo decided that what she wanted was for these assholes to stop picking on Ken. That's how it all started. After saving him, Momo loses interest and walks away. Are you really gonna let her leave like that, Ken? Hey, Miss Ayase! <clears throat> I know what you're into. Huh? I know what you're into. How many times are you gonna repeat yourself? a person yourself? like you, Miss ISA, to talk to a fellow like me? There can be only one explanation. I think you've got the wrong idea. President I Obama has already been to Mars. The whole of Project Pegasus revealed. Huh? You're interested in the paranormal, aren't you? Nah. Ken loves the paranormal. Momo basically doesn't believe in that shit, but she does believe in ghosts. Ken hears this and is like, what? Are you fucking stupid? Ghosts don't exist. Suddenly, they had a dare on their hands. Ken would investigate the paranormal while Momo would investigate a UFO hotspot. It's creepy, abandoned, and I think, yep, I definitely saw a crackhead wedge between the tiles, but there aren't any ghosts, except that bitch. On Momo's end, she doesn't hear a peep searching for aliens. Shit. Ken's body gets possessed by a ghost called Turbo Granny. Momo discovers in a pinch that she has psychic abilities, and with their new powers, Momo and Ken defeat the f gobbling aliens in a bombastic fashion by kicking the shit out of them. And if it sounds like I'm spoiling anything, just know that we've covered about this much of the story. About this much of this. Don Da Don always makes you feel like something happened. It's so bold in what it sets out to accomplish without ever tripping over its own feet. It lets you get comfortable with what's happening. We know aliens exist. Cool. We know ghosts exist. Also cool. But the magic happens once we know both of those things. Now it's reasonable to let you know that Turbo Granny stole Ken's wiener and they gotta get it back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, this makes sense. Also, a giant supernatural sumo wrestling demon has trapped our protagonist and the duo need to figure out right away how to manage Ken's powers just enough to beat them and they do so by using Momo's spirit powers to keep Ken's ghost half at bay. One chapter has passed. Are you fucking kidding me? The pacing is so, so... We're not ready for that music yet. I think issues arise in stories when chaotic shit occurs and the characters know exactly why. Durada, Evangelion, Tatami Galaxy, and I like that last one. But the first episode starts out like this. Oh, okay. That is enough. That's enough. That's enough. Then he meets a guy at a ramen shop who's rocking the quagmire chin. The first thing he says is, hey, you live in Shimogamo, right? And the main character says this in his head. Oh, here it comes. Yep. Yeah, he pretty much does this for four hours. It makes sense. This is how the main character thinks. All the big bad guys in Evangelion know what the Spear of Vaginismus and the goddamn angels and stuff do. It's an intentional choice not to spell things out for the audience. But I personally lose a level of immersion when there's no one to say, what the fuck are you talking about? Because I would be that guy. And check it, random things are routine in Don Da Don. Bobblehead musicians, giant crabs, and pistol shrimp. If you think you can predict anything that happens next, you will be proven wrong over and over again. But these two are like me. When a giant murderous crab chases them at 60 miles an hour, they don't go, that last. The crabbiest dabbiest has appeared, all according to prophecy. Ken isn't like, crab, a decapod crustacean found in all the world's oceans. A Japanese spider crab is known to grow 12 to 13 feet across. What they actually say is, what? And Momo remembers her grandma telling her the dead transform into crabs across the underworld river. Well, now we all know what's going on. Oh. Every encounter feels meaningful. The antagonists in this manga are amazing because nothing's black or white. Except for the art. There's no fodder, there are no hollows or cursed spirits where all ghosts are evil because, to me, these look like people. 
people that deal with suicide, murder, and famine, I think a lot of you are going to be touched by the stories they have to tell. Now the aliens, they just kind of do what the fuck they want. Then there's this Ira chick, as soon as she gets on screen, you're like, ooh, I don't trust that bitch. You can't. She bullies Ken in a sneak diss, hater ass way, so you prey on her downfall. And God is good. So many times. He delivers us danger for that harlot. So I'm happy, but Ken and Momo have to save her regardless. And I won't spoil how, but in the heat of the moment, when anyone would crack or try to save themselves, Ira proves all of us wrong. She feels grateful for Ken and Momo's help, even regrets what she did to them. What she did next had me wishing I had as much emotional maturity as her at that age. You're gonna love this character. Gigi, I didn't like him either. He just kind of intervenes on the story and starts stealing Momo from Ken. He walks around with this fake smile all the time, hitting on every girl in sight, so you put this label on him. Fuck boy. Then you flip a page. In another page, one more, and he's a big sweetie, he really is. And this is where I start thinking, wait, that smile ain't fake, is it? I was just closed-minded. That's what I like about these characters. They're childish, they fight, they play, they do stupid shit, and it pulls them to the ground on Earth with the rest of us. They have weaknesses, of course, but that's the same juice they use to make heroes. But if it looked like this, I wouldn't read it, you know? This I'd certainly read, but not this. Motion. Sound. Music. As a mangaka, you don't have these godly tools. You can't immerse someone with manga the same way you can with anime. So how does Yukinobo Tatsu work around this? By simply drawing the fuck out of every line you see. As the gang fights these musical ghosts, you can hear, you can hear this wall of sounds hit you like a truck. And then in a flash, we're suddenly in this divine theater. Dirt and scuffs hug the skin of our characters, but the theater remains pristine. And for a moment, the sound is just as pure. If you let them, mosaics ripple along the ceiling and every wall, but those people, there's gotta be at least a hundred, yet each face radiates individuality. They're not right somehow. And when that sinks in, the music in your head becomes dreadful. The devil is in the details. It's how a single panel here can communicate five different things. There are so many places where Yukinobu could and should cut corners, but he doesn't. And that's why the fights crack burst and explode. Just look at how chunks of wood spray the page and you can still make out what's going on in the background. He didn't have to draw any of that. One chapter, this guy kicks up all of Ken, Ken sidesteps and pivots out the way. Oh shit. He ducks under the punch, sprints to his blind spot, but the bad guy ricochets the ball off the wall, hitting Ken and BAM! Are you scared of spoilers? That's like one tenth of the fight. I can do this all fucking day. One thing that struck me is that Dondadon's fights aren't just different from every other manga's, but beyond that, they're different every chapter. You fight aliens, ghosts, mythical creatures. Uh, what the hell? John Bion is very black. It might not look like it to the untrained eye. Hey, bitch ass nigga. See? Where you at then? Black. Fuck my mouth, bitch. Huh? Even if our eyes don't see it, even if it doesn't make very much sense, it occurred naturally to John without his consent. And I think love works very much in the same way. Momo is into alpha males like John, like Ken Takakura. She even dated some douchebag because he kind of resembled him. Our Ken does not look very much like that. He doesn't act like that. He's more like McLovin or Carl Jacobs, that's what Momo tries to tell herself. But Cupid has some whack ass aim, doesn't he? I love how relatable it is watching the characters play tug of war, you know? Ken, this poor little dope is convinced no one can like him. I've been there as a kid, I know exactly what he's thinking. Then Momo's over here thinking, do I like him? I can't, no, 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 but it's not contrived. You watch their friendship start to bloom and questions like, do I deserve her? Do I like him? Start to fade in the real questions like, what's she doing? How's she doing? When can we see each other next? Start to take their place. I don't know if they're going to end up with each other. Maybe it's infatuation, a spark, or a fling, but it's raw, it's sweet, and I can't help but feel like I've been there. Every relationship in Dondadon has that same warmth. Gigi can't use cold water, so when he wakes up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, Ken notices he isn't there. This kid hustles out of his sleeping bag and waddles over to the bathroom to warm his friend's water. Her too. Sometimes you don't need an irritating Sundre or a preppy douche or a popular girl stereotype. Sometimes people just 
take care of each other. And I think that's why I like this manga so much. I look through the elaborate fights, the unpredictable plot, and the wonderful storytelling to watch this table fill up, full of people that take care of each other. Fuck this table!